Hey everyone, George Hernandez with the Home Cooks Club. I'm here at Test Kitchen 2 where today I'll be making my version of arroz con pollo. This dish was requested by our group's founder, Kat Catrola. To me, arroz con pollo is one of those dishes that's very special to me. Growing up, both my mama Soyla and my mom would make this dish, each with their own twist. Uh, and over the years, I've taken both of their recipes and just made it into my own. So please sit back, relax, and follow along as I make my version of arroz con pollo. Thank you. All right, now that we have all of our ingredients ready, uh, we're gonna start off by making the marinade for the chicken. Some extra virgin olive oil. Just put just enough so where you can have a nice thick uh, marinade. And we're gonna grab our whisk again and just whisk away. Good thing about this is if you need a little more, to add a little bit more extra of olive oil, you can go ahead and do so. If not, I put about a quarter of a cup. And because we are dealing with raw chicken, um, I am gonna go ahead and put on some gloves since I'll be working with different ingredients throughout uh, the cooking process. And I don't have to necessarily wash my hands every two minutes. Uh, for the chicken, I went ahead and bought it, got it right off the, uh, the package. And a lot of people like to uh, wash your chicken out. I don't. What I like to do is take it out of the package and pat it dry uh, with paper towels. This also helps eliminate the cross-contamination throughout your kitchen. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab chicken pieces here. Gonna move this to the side so I have more room to work with. Hey, for, over, uh, for up to 24 hours, I like to just do a quick 15 minute because I try to keep my meals under an hour uh, to include prep time. So we'll be right back after I let this marinate. While our chicken marinates, we're gonna start with the sofrito. Sofrito is a base or a sauce. Um, onions, bell peppers, and garlic. Uh, some folks like to use tomatoes, anato seeds, and beer if you're in the Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico. For uh, my dish, or my variation of the dish, we're gonna do bell peppers, onions, garlic, and uh, so we're just gonna get started chopping or bell peppers. And now that I finished chopping on my onions and bell peppers, I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna bring back the chicken and we're gonna sear it for three to five minutes on each side. And at that point we'll remove it and we'll get back to the sofrito base. So we'll be right back. Now that our chicken has been marinating for at least 15-20 minutes, the base of our sofrito uh, is out of the way now. What I did was I grabbed a three and a half quart braiser and I am going to add some extra virgin olive oil into this, let it warm up, and then I'll be pulling my chicken out of the fridge. So I'm adding about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of oil just to coat the pan, let it warm up. I'm just gonna give it a nice swirl. Hopefully my hot plate doesn't shut off on me. And if needed, I will add more oil here in a bit. Let's see, make sure our heat is still on. It is, I'm gonna let that warm up. And I'm gonna go and pull the chicken out of the fridge. Chicken's out of the fridge. I don't know if you can tell, but the Paste on the chicken has really been absorbed. It's nicely coated, kind of caramelized in the chicken. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and put it into our oil. I'm gonna place the chicken skin side down and I'm kind of give it a swirl here because I don't want my skin to get stuck on the brazier itself. So we're gonna sear the chicken for about three to five minutes per side roll these around and if needed uh, you can always add more oil also remember that part of our marinade was all of oil so I am trying not to put too much down but if needed I will add more uh, which in this case I probably will as well as raise my uh, temperature on the heat So now we're gonna flip the chicken over and let it cook for another three to five minutes. So now that both sides have been seared, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the chicken from the brazier. I'm 
once I got all my pieces removed, I'm gonna set the chicken to the side because it's time to get started on our sofrito. Chicken's off to the side. Now we have our bell pepper and onion. We're gonna toss it into our braiser here. And we are gonna cook this for about three minutes. What we really want is to get the onion to be translucent. The good thing about the onion is that it has a lot of liquid in it, so as it's cooking, it's also helping remove some of the brown bits that are stuck at the bottom of the razor. Kind of even all this out here, let it get it even cook. While this is cooking, I'm actually going to be introducing capers into our sofrito. I like to add capers in so that I don't have to add as much uh, lemon juice at the end. But you can omit the capers if you don't like them. You can add lemon, you can remove the lemon. The good thing about arroz con pollo is that you can really make it your own as far as what you want to add into it, as long as at the end of the day it has chicken and rice. So our onion's been cooking down uh, for about three minutes now, it's nice and translucent. So what we're going to incorporate now or add into our braiser is rice that I've actually soaked in water for about 30 minutes. Really what I wanted to do was get as much of the starch out of the rice as possible. Uh, so I'm going to add it onto the braiser. Get in as much of it as possible. And what we're going to do now is toast our rice in our sofrito base. Really what I'm trying to do is toast all sides of the rice. That seems good. Now if you recall at the beginning of me combining all the spices, I reserved about a tablespoon worth of spices. So I'm going to be incorporating that into our, so that the liquid that our arroz con pollo cooks in is nice thick. Uh, which is just exactly how I like it. So around this time, everything's looking pretty good, so I am going to be incorporating our garlic. I love garlic, so I like to add about two tablespoons worth of minced garlic. You can add as much or as little as you like. I'm going to take some of our tomato paste. I'm going to take about uh, two tablespoons worth of tomato paste. And I have about a quarter cup of fire roasted tomatoes. Cool thing about these tomatoes, you can actually buy a can of fire roasted tomatoes at your local uh, grocery store. I'm gonna give this a nice stir. Excellent. So we have some chicken stock. And we're gonna use about three quarters of the chicken stock, so that should be about 24 ounces worth. A little more. Right. Now that that's well incorporated, I'm moving my utensil here in uh, figure eight. I don't feel any bits that I'm scraping up anymore. And we're just gonna let it simmer uh, for about three minutes. So our mixture here has been simmering for about three minutes. We're gonna add in some olives. If you've noticed, we haven't seasoned with salt and pepper up to this point. The reason for that is the addition of the capers and the olives into the dish. So what I highly recommend for anyone following along and making this recipe at home is to taste as you go. So now that the olives have cooked down for a few minutes here, 
we can actually do a taste test just to see where we are with the saltiness of our dish. So, got a tasting spoon and I'm just going to scoop up some of the sauce here. It's tasting good. I will be adding some salt. Add a pinch or two, in this case two, of salt. I'll add some pepper. Don't know if you can tell, if you can zoom the camera in, cat, but our rice is looking nice and fluffy. That's because I use basmati rice. Now that the power is off, I'm going to grab our chicken. And I will place our chicken right on top over the rice. Now that we have our chicken in the brazier, I'm going to add in some pre-sliced lemon. I'm just going to scatter around the dish. I'm going to grab some of the remaining oil from where I was resting the chicken and I'm going to drizzle it over the lemon slices. Sprinkle some salt over the lemon. Really what I want is just to get some of the, the juice out of the lemon as it is uh, in the oven baking away. So our arroz con pollo has been in the oven for about 20 minutes now. I'm going to pull it out of the oven. We're going to add some peas, drizzle a little bit of olive oil over it, and stick it back in the oven for about 5 minutes. So remember that the brazier is hot, it's been in the oven. Make sure you wear some heat proof gloves. I'm gonna open it up, steam's coming out. Let's set this to the side here. So I have some frozen peas that have thawed out. And we're just gonna sprinkle them around the dish. Now what I like about adding peas is they are sweet. And remember, we have a ton of spices in this dish. So I'm trying to cut out some of the saltiness and some of the earthiness by adding something that is sweet and fresh all on its own. Very little. I'm gonna try to drizzle just a little bit. Sprinkle just a little bit of salt. So now that the dish is out of the oven, we're just gonna go ahead and grab some fresh cilantro. Add a little more. And then we're just gonna sprinkle it right over the top of the dish. And there you have it, arroz con pollo. Amazing. The acidity from the capers, the olives, really bring a different flavor profile out of the dish. Uh, the sweetness from the peas is just complements the spices, the acidity. It's just something that really reminds me of my youth. If you like this video and like to see more, please click on the link. Follow along the Home Cooks Club. We're on Facebook as well. Please like us, give us a follow, subscribe. If you don't have a YouTube account, that is fine. Most of us all have a Gmail or some type of Google account. You can use that. Uh, that way you can like, comment, provide feedback so that Kat, myself, as well as Chrissy Thompson over in Nevada uh, can have a better idea of what you would like to see out of the Home Cooks Club. Thank you for joining me. Peace. Peace.